So um, got Eden Sky with us, and um, we're just gonna have some conversation. We were talking about, you know, the guru and um, people that put other teachers, wisdom teachers, transformational leaders on pedestals, and how they all fall off at some point or another, and the shadow side to um, some of the light leaders and people that are really contributing to the awakening of consciousness and how they too have their shadows. So we were just having a conversation about that and I thought it's so relevant and would make a really good topic to explore. So Eden, would you like to begin? Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just something that has always been my nature. Um, I think it's because uh, when I was nine years old, my father dropped me off at school every day and every day before school he would say question authority question authority question authority and i think it really it really really got through to me um and i've raised my son with that same that same focus in fact my son he's 20 years old now my son merlin and he had a reputation at high school for being um uh for being very uh uh, not just, what is it, tenacious, uh, what's, oh wait, oh, my brain just stopped, what's that word, um, uh, no, contentious, tenacious and contentious, um, which I think is actually, like, I'm actually proud of that, like, you know, he would, he would come back and tell me about things he learned in his economics class, and then we would sit there and go, like, wait a minute, this is, like, totally old paradigm, this is based on Adam Smith's model of scarcity, this is not real economics, it should be based on, you know, quantum physics of the plenum and the natural abundance of the universe, so he would go back and he would question his teachers, and a lot of times they couldn't answer his questions. And so he got like a literal reputation. Some teachers talked to me because they were like, oh yeah, it's good questions. It's just so great that he's so like that. And I was like, yeah, that's my boy. Um, so for me, you know, like I'm so glad that my father programmed me to question authority. And I think that really it's a missing piece in, uh, in a lot of, of humanity, like a lot of, you know, humanity, we just go along with the program and we think that what everybody else is doing is like the way to do it. Um, and, you know, we don't really think about how actually we're all inventing human culture. We're all making it up. What does it mean to be human? Like we're all influencing each other and modeling to each other, you know, what it means to be human and what our customs are and what's acceptable. And, you know, and you can even look like, you know, different generations, like stuff in my son's generate, like, whoa, it's super different. You know, it's really, anyway, it's really interesting though. So I think that the, the power of questioning, which is where I started, question authority. So for me, that's such an ingrained thing that I just inherently you know, um, have never wanted a guru. I've, I, I am, I'm very, I'm super skeptical. I'm actually, sometimes I used to be more cynical when, when I was younger, I was more goth. Um, nowadays I would just say I'm super skeptical and I actually like that quality in myself. And so basically I don't, you know, I don't consider anyone my guru and I don't consider anything gospel, anything anyone says. Um, and I found that, you know, I will, I'm very happy to learn from teachers and, and uh, you know, receive wisdom. And I have a tremendous respect um, for different bodies of work. And um, so I, you know, I'm, I, I mean it with humility, um, you know, but for me, it's about the sat guru, the guru within. Um, and so what I have also noticed is that, you know, many, yeah, many teachers that have these incredible, incredible bodies of work, life-changing bodies of work, um, that I, I really have experienced and I really believe in, then simultaneously there can be a real, a real human shadow that's like um, a very different vibration of like their unprocessed stuff, uh, their unintegrated self, and just sort of learning how to be aware of that. And to me, it's, it's that much more of a reminder of, of basically to, 
you know, what I've learned is to run everything through what I call my own antennas, you know, so, okay, does this resonate with me? And, you know, and I'll read books, for example, and I'll go, yes, yes, yes. And then go, no, nope, that paragraph right there, I'm not resonating with. And then I'll just continue. So to me, I think it's really important for people to have their own discernment and their own antennas and their own, you know, system of resonance. And also to, to celebrate when people shine and when they're, you know, you can feel when someone's really clear and they're really giving something that, a teaching that resonates with me. But then if, if there's moments of offness and there's moments of, of shadow and unprocessed stuff, then like, okay, I have compassion for you and I'm gonna, you know, like come into my own, my own sovereignty. Yeah, thank you. I love that so much. That's what I, um, you know, in my teaching, I, I help people come into their own sovereignty and I think especially right now, you know, it's so important to have our own sovereignty and to go into our own intuition and our own internal voice. I mean, look at what happened in history with Hitler, <laughs> for example. I mean, you know, and, and that can happen again. I mean, we're looking at politics now and, and where that's being led. And, and, you know, it's really, really important. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Um, and, you know, the other thing is putting people on pedestals. And I know I've done that. And every time I do, the teacher just falls off. And I actually did that with Anadea Judith. And she actually said to me, Shamet, I am not a guru. Please don't put me on a pedestal. Like, take me off right now. And I thought, exactly. I respect her. I love the work that she's doing. And I have even more respect for her that she was so clear to say, please don't put me on a pedestal. And I think that's important for us all to remember, like you said, in Lakesh, we are all divine reflections of one another, which means that we are all equal and we are all our own gurus, <laughs> or at least should be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we are all equal and we're, we're all unified and yet we're all diverse and we all have totally distinct artistic, creative manifestations of the one universe. And, you know, so we, we're these incredible uh, reflections to each other. And, and I think for me, the distinction between, you know, putting someone on a pedestal and which automatically, oh, you know, they're they're superior to me. And so I must be, you know, not good enough or, you know, whatever. Certainly that happens as a human being, but instead to like, when I see somebody, you know, really for me, the redemption of that is when I see somebody, um, you know, really shining and really embodying their gifts to just, just go, wow, like feel the inspiration of like, not that I need to be able to do that same thing and, you know, and have that old paradigm, like compete with this, you know, try to do the same thing, which I'm likely not going to be able to do, but to actually see them as, wow, look at this art of the universe, like through this person's embodiment, like here's the universe, the creativity of, of the cosmic life force actualizing in this you know, human instrument. And there's so many ways that that happens. And so really it's about not comparing myself to that as much as, well, how does the universe, cosmic intelligence and, and creative force want to operate through me? What is my, where do I shine? Um, where, you know, where is, where, where is my gift that can inspire others? Because I think that's really the idea and the new paradigm is, right, for us to inspire one another. And we're all so unique you know so i think that yeah this this pedestal thing or this guru thing it just really it's really old paradigm um it's really it's really patriarchal and there's it's not um it's not empowering anybody and what we really want like you're saying is to to empower one another to to be sovereign to be autonomous to be whole and to be able to share and shine uh, in our unique ways yeah because everyone's particular brand of magic is different. And it's about bringing all those voices and all those rays and all that magic together. Because I mean, that's what makes up the orchestra of life, right? It's all the different instruments and it's all the different sounds that create the melody, not just 
the guitar or the drum or the, you know, the singer or, you know, but it's the whole thing. And so I, I love that as well as like our authentic voice of not like me trying to be Anadea. I don't want to be Anadea. I want to be my own version of who I am and shine my light and radiate my light in the way that she has or you have because you know you're another person that I've always admired Eden is how eloquent you are and how you're able to communicate through your voice in a particular way that is so um like it weaves in time is art and it's it like you you're able to beautifully present these vast concepts of the cosmos and the the galactic connection in such a beautiful poetic way that I've always admired and I think that's the other piece of it it's not that I have put you on a pedestal or that you're a guru but I have so much respect and so much mm -hmm. honor for who you are and your particular brand of magic that you're bringing to the world and so I, that's why I thought this conversation was so good is because I do see a lot of people want to be like this person, want to be like that person. And then they start to be carbon copies of, of that. And, I, and then I, I get real, I actually get really triggered about it. I'm like, why are they trying to be someone they're not? What about being who they are and going within and awakening that magic and bringing that to the world? Yeah. And yeah, it's one of my, it's a little, it's one of my pet peeves. And that's why I have dedicated some of my work to helping people align to their soul path purpose work um, to bring that out, because I think that's so relevant and so important. Do you have any ideas about how to help people find their own um, particular brand of magic? Like, how did you come to it? How did you find your way? Because <laughs> you found you um, your way at a very early age. I think you were 19, weren't you? Um, yeah, well, I just want to say one other thing about what you just said a moment ago. I think that, yeah, it's really about that energy of reverence that when we, when we, when we see or experience or there's people in our lives that, you know, they're really shining and they're really living their dharma, then we, you know, to revere that because that's, uh, you know, to, to honor that in a sacred way. And that then the, the, the vibration of reverence is totally distinct, um, you know, from comparison or feeling like, oh, I must, you know, I, you know, I don't have anything to offer, you know, and it's, so I just want to say that, that reverence and, and rejoicing for other people when they're living their dharma uh, and giving their gifts is, is really important. And then the idea of, yeah, not always, needing to look externally, you know, the guru thing is like looking for external validation and how do I do this and da, 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 and, and learning, learning how to be self-referencing. And it's not always easy, but the more that we can like go, okay, how do I cultivate my intuition? How do I cultivate my, you know, my sensibilities, what I call my antennas. It's like, they're like muscles that we have to strengthen. And it's just great value in that. Cause like you were saying, especially in this moment, this moment is, whoa, like there's so much stuff flying around every, I've heard everything under the sun <laughs> and, you know, who knows what's true. So we have to find our own internal discernment. Um, and to me, it has a lot to do with the vibration, you know, what, what's going on vibrationally. So that's a whole other topic, but anyway, the, the practicality of, of learning our own discernment. Um, and then the, the question of, you know, how do we find our authentic path? I don't know that I can answer that all the way, but I will say, you know, on some ways I just feel I was really, really blessed because, you know, my, my path just, you know, it found me. I was, I was 18 years old and I was going to Portland Community College and I was about to graduate with my high school completion because uh, I had dropped out of high school. By the way, that's how we met is at Portland Community College too. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had dropped out of high school because that was part of my questioning authority because I was like, 
I'm not learning anything. This is a huge waste of time. And my mom was like, yeah, get out. I was like, cool, I'm out. Um, and then I started going to uh, high school and college and then that was great. I could meet all of these really diverse people. Um, but I was like, okay, I'm about to graduate, whatever that means. And then I saw that, you know, what was, what I was seeing around me was that, oh, people were then going on to become like, you know, dental clinicians or whatever. And I was like, what am I supposed to do now? I'm supposed to like, you know, do something. And I was like, well, I'm not going to keep going to community college, you know, nothing, nothing was calling me. I'll put it like that. So I was like, I was literally praying. I was like, okay, universe, um, I need I need a hobby. I basically was like, look, just give me something to care about. Give me something to feel passionate about. I was, that was, that was the sense that I, that was the one thing I knew was that, that, you know, without someone explaining it, I had an innate understanding that if there was a purpose for me in the universe, um, it would, it would be associated with me feeling passionate about it. Um, that's all I knew. So I was literally like, look, even if you want me to like be a stamp collector, or if that's what I'm supposed to do, like, just like show me because I got nothing. I have no idea. And I, I knew, so that much I knew, I knew I was supposed to feel passionate about something, some kind of hobby I was supposed to feel passionate about. That was all I knew. And then through a total, complete, nonlinear, utter serendipitous flow. Uh, long story short, I ended up at Kinko's. Uh, if you guys remember Kinko's, where you, you know, Xerox place, and there was this piece of paper in front of me that had all these colors and symbols and, and codes jumping off the page. And I start, my cells started imploding from the inside out. And I was like, what is that? And he was like, I don't know, it's some calendar we're supposed to follow. Do you want a copy? And I was like, yes. And I just was like having this visceral experience um, that I've never felt before or since. And then along with this encoded piece of paper was these articles from Jose Arguelles changed from mechanical time to natural time. And I started reading these articles when I was 18 years old and it just blew my mind that our whole concept of time has been totally, it's totally false that we're living in artificial time. And there's a whole other, you know, secret code of the universe. So I just started following it. I started like just learning everything I could. And, and what, what was really cool is that at that time, nobody made calendars like I did. So there was none of this, like, you know, now you can just go and get our calendar or go on a website and like, it's all right there laid out for you. But back in 1995, that was not the case. There was like almost nothing. And um, so I had this one piece of paper that just told me what each of the 13 numbers, there's 13 tones and there was one tone, one number for every day and every tone had one word. That's all I had. So I was like, oh, it's the day of unity. Oh, it's the day of polarity. Oh, it's the day of rhythm. It's the day of form. And then that was like my whole awakening to cosmic time was just following the 13 day cycle. And I just became so, I was just like, wow, this is really cool. This is really magical. And I started talking about it. And next thing I know, they're having me do, you know, workshops at the Renaissance bookstore to these like middle-aged people. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess you guys want to hear about it too. Cool. And then, so I had no idea. So then 25 years later, I had no idea that it was going to be my career. I was just like, I love doing this. So that's all I can answer about how do you find your authentic you know, pa uh, purpose is that it has to do with what you're passionate about. Yeah, that's, that's and I, I, love, I love how you said that you really opened yourself to the universe, to the cosmos, yeah. and asked, you said, give me something. I did. <laughs> you, know, you, you like actually asked to yeah. be given your soul path purpose, whether you know it yeah. or not, that's exactly what you did. And, you know, yeah. and then you listened, like you actually yeah. listened. And, and then I love that you were activated by the symbols. So I love, it was like calling it forth and then it being handed to you, but then you noticed you had enough consciousness and awareness to notice your path and then you were activated and the rest is history, right? I mean, you've been so passionate about it for years. So yeah. 
Yeah. yeah and I think, I think that's a good point that I, I definitely asked. I mean, I, I, for all I know, I kind of like implored or begged the universe. Cause I was, <laughs> I was aware, like, you know, I'm about, this is, I'm coming to an end point here. And then I was aware, okay, I'm supposed to do something. And I was aware at least too, that I had no idea. And I was aware that I didn't want to contrive it. And I, you know, so I want, I did open to a higher, you know, to a higher power, like, okay, you, somebody there knows who's way more smarter than me. You know, you know, what's best for me, you know, what is, you know, what, what am I supposed to do? Um, and so, yeah, really imploring this higher power to show me. And then it's true that when I felt that, that like vibration, um, you know, I did then really, so I felt it, I paid attention, and then I really followed it. And I kept, I kept pursuing that connection, which basically it felt like there was something magical and that I don't know, I don't understand. I was, I don't understand it rationally, but I need to pursue this, this magical feeling that I'm something is I'm learning something. There's something new happening here and just following that. And then here I am 25 years later. And, you know, and the same thing, the, the, the calendar sparks as much passion for me as it did when I was 18 years old. And that's why I'm really honored to have this as my life's work because it, it um, yeah, it really is magical. So that's what I would hope for people is that, that yeah, that they can find, you know, what, what brings people passion, what, what, what brings them that sense of connectivity. And I think it is really fundamental um, because I think that, yeah, I think one of the things that's wrong with our culture is we all compare each other to each other and then, um, you know, there's, there's so much room for innovation. And I think also like with, you know, raising our children to help, help them get in touch with what is their, what is their authentic passion? Um, yeah, I'm getting flashbacks of the matrix right now, you know, the green pill or the red pill or the, you know, and, and you, you knew it like from hearing your story, it's like you knew that you did not want to be part of that matrix yeah. of what everybody else did. So you knew at 18 years old that that's not, that's not what you wanted to be part of. So in a way, I, I just wonder if you're an old soul and perhaps you knew already the wisdom of being able to ask, I, I don't know. It just, it, it filled very, like, how would you know that at such a young age? I don't know. I, I mean, my dad told me to question authority. So I don't know. I was just, <laughs> there it goes. And, and, you know, and I, so I will, I will say that with my son Merlin, um, so I've, I've continued that lineage of question authority. And then I've also added, added uh, the saying to him as he's been growing up, as I said, Merlin, uh, you are not here to be typical. What the world does not need is one more typical person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you know that's you not, I, you and I have that in common, Eden. My dad used to say, uh, don't trust everything you see. All right. Only trust half of what you see, half of what you hear and half of what you think, you know, question everything and yeah, that's great yeah so you and I have that in common because that's what my my father programmed into me and I'm so glad that he did because I have always looked behind what I see and listened to you know behind what I hear mm -hmm. and not always just believe something that somebody powerful, well-meaning, and knowledgeable has to say. Another question I have for you, there's a lot of conspiracy theories going around. I mean, so many, it's hard to keep track of them. But there's one particular one about how these people of the secret government are in the moon and they're controlling the moon. And this one has really kind of gotten under my skin because I feel, I mean, I actually have several of the women that used to come to my women's circles that don't come anymore because they're afraid of the moon now. I mean, like seriously, they're afraid of the moon. They're guarding their third eye 
from the moon and the frequency of the moon, which I just find, I find it so sad. I find it part of that patriarchal energy that has, you know, been suppressing us for so long. I feel like it's more of that. And my intuition doesn't have a good feeling about it. And I love the moon. I've always loved the moon. And, you know, I was just wondering what you thought about that. If you have any feelings that you'd want to share. Yes, I, I have no interest in subscribing to something that is going to make me want to block myself from the moon, you know, the, the moon, the sun, the stars, planet earth. We are part of a huge, beautiful, you know, universal orchestration. Uh, I, I can't, to me that, that is just, um, I see no purpose in that. Um, you know, for me, it's like, if, if I'm in my heart, and in the vibration of compassion, um, then I feel, and I've made a real study of this, I feel, you know, that my energy field is protected. Um, if there are some whatever going on. Um, so I, yeah, to me, if I was to, to do something like that, I'm, I'm giving a lot of power away to fear. Um, and I think that's something that I've learned is that there's a lot of stuff flying around, all kinds of things. And, you know, that I, I want to give my power to, to love, to compassion, to, to clarity, to truth, to what resonates with me. So, you know, it's not my business what other people believe. And, you know, I'm sure there's a whole kinds of information out there about that. And, you know, bless everyone for doing their best to navigate um, this very, very difficult moment. You know, I have no judgment on, you know, there's this huge spectrum of different beliefs, um, you know, and it's like we all have to find our sovereign way, which was the theme of this, um, of this conversation is we have to find our, our way with, with our own internal discernment. So I, you know, for me, like, I just, I really, I trust my antennas when something when something comes up or I hear about something, I just go, hmm, that's not, I, I either resonate or I don't. And then that might change. But I just, for me, that's what it's about. It's about learning moment by moment to, to really get clear with my energetic senses. Um, that to me is just a really practical feature. And then I'm not, I'm not looking to anybody else to, to show me the way or to show me the truth. Like I said, I'll learn from people and I'll take things in and, but I will analyze them with my own sensibilities. And that might, things might change, you know, I'm like, I'm not a fixed, I'm not a fixed system. I'm open to, okay. But it all comes back to that same, same principle. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's very good wisdom. Yeah. Um, early days when I met my boyfriend, which is now my husband of over 20 years, I went and saw a psychic and the first one said, no, no, he's not the one. And I wasn't happy with that. So I went to another one, you know, I was very young and uh, she said, oh yes, yes. He's the one. He's the one. Definitely marry him. And I thought, oh, now I've got yes. And I have no, I saw a third one. <laughs> I saw a third one. And the third one said, he is the one if you choose him to be the one, darling. It's up to you. You're the manifester of your reality. Don't you know that? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really important to go within and find our own way and create our own reality in which we want to create and how we want to do it, and what we want to believe, what we don't want to believe. Yeah. Yeah. So any final words? Yeah, I think just just the the final piece of that sentiment for me, um, you know, I what my prayer for myself and my intention is is to have my beliefs and my perceptions, um, you know, constantly upgraded and um, in, uh, attuned by my own higher self. 
Um, you know, so I don't, I don't want my beliefs and perceptions to be just, you know, uh, dictated by my, by my mind and by my, you know, linear egoic, you know, mental trip. I, I want my, you know, that's what I'm, that's my, my real sincere prayer is that I may be constantly upgraded and, and attuned by my own higher self, uh, which I, I believe that we all have a direct connection to our own higher self. And that's part of our sovereign, you know, empowerment. And that's, so that's what, you know, I don't want an outside guru and someone on a pedestal. I want my own higher self to guide my own sat guru, my guru within. So, and as, as, you know, as, as, as I can subscribe to more, you know, um, more clear beliefs, more empowering, more positive, more life affirming, you know, beliefs and perceptions. That's what I want for myself. So I can continue to be of service, um, bring positive energy. And that's what I want for, for everyone um, that we can continue to support each other in that of, of um, you know, connecting in with our own sovereign higher self connection. Yeah. Thank you. I would say though, it is, also important to have support and you know there are moments where i feel like i have spiritual amnesia and you know especially if i get triggered or an old wound gets brought back up to the surface i find i can spiral down into this shadowy place where my clear vision that i had before is just gone (laughs) it's like and in those times, it is really good to be able to reach out to someone, a good friend or an oracle yep. or a healer, you know, yep. and so in times like that, I do feel that we need each other and, you know, Absolutely. and have that connection. Um, and so it is a dance, isn't it? Because there are times yeah. where I can be completely sovereign I'm tapped in, tuned in, plugged in. I see everything clearly. And at those times, I don't need anyone else. I know exactly where I'm going. It's the other times where I can just spiral down and out that sometimes I need to reach for a lifeline. And so I think ideally that spiritual sovereignty is the goal, but it's not always attainable. And so being discerning about who we reach out for the lifeline. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and knowing when we need to ask for help is a beautiful thing. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a power superhero power in and of itself. It's like, Oh, I need help right now. I need support. Um, and uh, understanding when we're in a really vulnerable state and what do we need to do to nurture ourselves whether for our own selves or whether receiving from others, you know, absolutely. No, that's totally, obviously a real part of life. And, you know, I have uh, really uh, beautiful respect and reverence for people that are really good therapists and counselors and healers. Um, You know, there's incredible um, healers out there and incredible tools also that we can learn to also support ourselves. Um, You know, all of it, absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of, lot of compassion for the, the wholeness of the human journey that, it, in, in that integrates our, our vulnerability and also our, our uh, you know, our resilience and our uh, invincibility, you know, that they, they are both, yeah. both part of it. I bring that up because I was, uh, this is a few years ago in Wellington and I was teaching people to be spiritually sovereign and you know, I was really like, create your own reality, be your own guru, all, you know, all of that. And then, um, and I would relate it to being in the driver's seat of your life. And that was my little like tag that I was using, my tagline, be in the driver's seat of your own life. And then I got locked out of my truck and I, I could not, like I had to pick up the kids and I was, they're just, I, I was locked out. There was no getting in. And I had to ask my friend, for help. I had to ask her to drive me to pick up the kids and she has this big van. So I had to have the kids get down and lie down flat so that, you know, we didn't get busted by the police. And like, it was this whole adventure. And she was laughing at me. She's like, be in the driver's side of your own life, huh? Sometimes you just need a friend, don't you, Shamet? And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm taking that tagline down, you know, because sometimes 
We do need Absolutely. help, you know, and Absolutely. sometimes we, we actually can't be in the driver's seat. Like sometimes we would actually have to let someone else drive. <laughs> so it's a balance. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good Absolutely. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it was. Yay. Love you, my sister. I love you too.